Good evening and welcome to the 23rd annual Dixieland Devotions COVID edition. You may have noticed we've changed the name to Doing Good from a Distance, Jazz, Jokes, and Jesus. We didn't want anyone confused and showing up at the door. Our, our church is open, but we thought this event was just too large to try to pull off in person. Friends, I never doubted we would do something. With everything going on in the world, there was no way we could give up the joy, laughter, and hope these evenings offer. Thank you, everyone, who helped make this possible, especially Angela and Matt Williford, our live streaming team. Thank you, Backroom Gang, for letting us use your CD. Thank you, listeners and patrons. Let me offer a shout out to our friends at St. And uh, Andrew, St. Francis. Uh, we are glad that you are with us. We certainly miss you. Uh, you're a large part of why this program has been a success over so many years. And I personally can't wait till we have you back with us on these Wednesday nights. Remember, every penny we raise goes to our partner agencies. It's been this way for over 20 years. You can send your checks via the U.S. Postal Service to the Presbyterian Church, 701 Westminster Road, Traverse City, Michigan, 49686. Or you can give online at our church website, tcpresby.org backslash donate. Last year, we raised over $13,000. It was our best year ever. We would love to beat that this year, but we'll need everyone's help. We only have three nights instead of five. Uh, we're down to the last two. Uh, remember, all of your gifts go to support the work of our worthy partner agencies, uh, Goodwill Street Outreach, Food Rescue, Salvation Army, and Love Thy Neighbor. Friends, that's why we're here to have a good time listening to some great jazz, courtesy of the Backroom Gang and Angela, some not-so-great jokes, courtesy of yours truly, to raise some money for our great organizations, helping others to enjoy life a little bit more during these trying times, and to give thanks to God that we might keep doing good, even from a distance. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious God, our Creator and Redeemer, you are the Lord and giver of life, and you have called us to serve our neighbors near and far. Your love and compassion abound. You know our every need and have blessed us in countless ways we cannot begin to measure. We give thanks for your grace and blessing which empower our simple acts to bring consequential change to the lives of those with whom we serve. Though we sometimes get caught up in a world where there are so many fears and temptations, where there is so much to threaten the precious gift of life you have provided for us, we know and trust that you are with us and our lives are forever in your care. Bless our time together this evening with meaning and purpose. As we enjoy music, laughter, and fellowship, open our hearts to return the favor that the gifts we offer this night may bring joy, laughter, and friendship to those served by our partner agencies. May all we say and do and offer be for the greater good of your new creation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Enough talk. Let's get to work. Here come the saints. Angela, take it away.
Thank you, Angela. Next week, maybe I'll bring a tambourine and play along. Friends, did you know other professions, not just churches, have their own hymns? Dentists crown him with many crowns. Tailors and seamstresses, holy, holy, holy. Politicians, standing on the promises. Shoppers, in the sweet by and by. Cobblers, you know, shoemakers. It is well with my soul. Golfers, there is a green hill far away. IRS agents, I surrender all. And librarians, whispering hope. <laughs> oh, the laugh track makes me laugh more than my jokes. Uh, here are some other things to make you go, hmm? When something fades in the sunlight, where do the colors go? Hmm. Do fish get thirsty? Hmm. What do penguins wear for play clothes? You know, they're dressed in their formals. Hmm. What do you call a male ladybug? <laughs> Ever notice how irons have a setting for permanent press? If it's permanent press, why do you need to iron it? Hmm. Scarecrow got a brain, Tin Man a heart, Lion got courage, Dorothy got home. What did Toto get? Hmm. Do hummingbirds hum because they don't know the words? Are part-time band leaders semiconductors? Before they invented drawing boards, what did they go back to? Hmm. What was the best thing before sliced bread? The church choir was putting on a car wash to raise some money for their annual tour. They made a large sign which read, Car Wash for Choir Trip. On the given Saturday, business was terrific. But by 2 o'clock, the skies clouded and the rain poured and there were hardly any customers. Finally, one of the women had an idea. She printed a large cardboard poster which read, We wash and God rinses. I was just going to say, where's my rim shot? But um boom, band, take it away. Thank you. 
Thank you, band. Friends, our scripture reading tonight is from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Friends, there is power in love, authentic love. Power to transform lives. Power to forgive hurtful words and deeds. Power to restore relationships. Power to heal broken hearts. Power to make all things new. Power to bring life and joy. Billy Graham, the great evangelical lion, once told some folks gathered to hear him preach, God loves you. You're rebellious, you cheat, you commit immorality, you're selfish, you sin. But God loves you with an intensity beyond anything that I could describe to you. God loves you and God loves you so much that God gave God's only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross. And the thing that kept Christ on that cross was love, not the nail. Can you imagine being loved that way? To be confronted with the reality of your imperfections, your sin, only to discover God loves you no less. Perhaps some of you have experienced this. I would imagine it could change a person's life, maybe a family, even a nation. How many friendships Families, marriages might be saved if we could love this way. How much strife and anger would simply go away if we could see beyond the issues to the heart of the person with whom we are in conflict. How much hurt might be healed if we learn to love people for who they are, not for who we wish they could be. The power of such love is almost beyond our imagination. Almost. In the first letter of John, we are invited to love one another because such love comes from God. And those who love this way are born of God. This godly love is the same love Jesus was speaking about when he commanded us to love God with all that we are and to love our neighbors, even our enemies, as ourselves. Friends, this godly love is like no other. This godly love is sacrificial and unconditional. This godly love has the power to transform enemies into friends. This godly love has the power to heal and restore broken hearts and lives. This godly love offers a peace that passes all understanding. This godly love has the power to bring life and joy. This godly love sounds almost too good to be true. This godly love is almost beyond our comprehension. Almost. How can we ever hope to love this way? 
Jesus Christ. Friends, the love to which we are being called for each other, our families and friends, our co-workers and neighbors, even the strangers we meet on the street, the love to which we are being called is the hardest thing God will ever ask of us. But know this, God will never ask anything God hasn't already given us. The love God asks of us, the powerful, godly love that can restore lives and heal hearts has been given to us in Jesus Christ. In all of our relationships, there is no gift of the Spirit greater than the love of Jesus Christ. There is no sacrifice superior to the love of Christ. There is no way of life which surpasses love. Love is the most excellent way. The Apostle Paul spoke of this love in a poem meant not just for weddings, but for life. 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious, boastful, arrogant, or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Friends, this is the godly love that has the power to transform lives, the, the power to forgive hurtful words and deeds, the power to heal hearts, the power to make all things new. The power to bring life and joy. There is nothing in life greater than this godly love. Friends, this love is a powerful love. Don't confuse it with lesser infatuation. This love, which has the power to change lives and restore our world, comes only as a gift from God, but it is given to each of us. Therefore, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. Thanks be to God. Band, you're up. <clears throat> Thank you. 
are blues you get much quicker when you're drinking lots of liquor and somebody goes and takes it off the shelf. There are blues you get when everything's in hock or when your girlfriend doesn't answer when you knock. There are blues you get from getting in a taxi cab and fretting every time you hear the bumper jump the clock. There are blues you get from trying to keep your Uncle Bill from dying and he afterward forgets you in his will. There are blues you get from kisses when you're walking with the missus and another lady shouts, Hot Bill! There are blues that make you hop, want to shop, shake and shiver. The blues that make you want to go and end it in the river are the blues my naughty sweetie gives to me. Thank you, Ben. Oh, I should have had my flapper dress on for that one. No, I don't really have a flapper dress, but it would have been good for that tune. Friends, we have four wonderful mission partners tonight. Uh, we've got Food Rescue and Street Outreach, which you heard from last week. Uh, and tonight we have Matthew Winters, from the Salvation Army. Welcome. Well, thank you. Uh, excited to be here. Uh, got distracted with our own Bible study going on, and it was like, whoa. And so uh, the Salvation Army of Traverse City, uh, the things we're kind of doing right now are on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. We're still running our... Uh, canteen out in our front parking lot on Barlow Street. Um, we're running our community programs, our community food. And so what that looks like then is people can come and they can take meals to go. And uh, then that allows them to, to still receive the meals that way. Uh, but then we're, we're practicing the distancing as well. So we're kind of adjusting that way. On Monday, Wednesdays, we're also uh, uh, giving out food baskets. And so uh, we get fresh produce right now from the state of Michigan, but then also we have some uh, other groceries that we are able to hand out there. So people can pull around to the back side as well. And so uh, a lot of different things are changing right now. And so um, we're trying to adjust with those changes. And so uh, the Salvation Army has, has been serving through this all. And right now, I think the biggest thing for us that we're seeing an increase in is um, Normally we help with utility assistance, we would help with uh, rent assistance, and we're looking at maybe one bill or, or two bills maybe that have piled up, and now we're seeing with, with uh, the government help that's happened, um, there's a lot more money that, that people are coming in asking for, and so we're able to work with different organizations like Father Fred uh, to help meet some of those needs, uh, but that's probably the, the biggest thing right now is you know, where we used to be able to help with like a $300 bill, some people are coming in with 400 500 600 and we've seen $1,000 bills and, and not knowing where to turn and what's next. And so as the government funding is kind of coming uh, to a close and those safety nets drop out, we're seeing first-time comers. We're seeing uh, the, the people who have normally come. Um, and I think that that's the beautiful thing is we're there, we're there to help. And then in any situation as that happens, um, we can assist those people and so we're trying our best with those resources and so we're appreciative of the help too that that comes our way and so that's kind of what we're looking at right now in this time um, and going forward as well do you go by matt or matthew uh either Both? i always introduce myself as matthew but most people call me matt okay well about how many folks do you think you're serving uh during the week yeah, so community meals right now, uh, the Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday meals, we're making 124. We were making 166 and sending some with one lady at the end, and then we, we saw that traffic right now is, is more comparable to 120, 124, I think is what it is. Okay. Um, and then the food rescue box is out back. Uh, today we, we handed, we, we ordered 64 boxes, and uh, between Monday and Wednesday we've given all of those out so we're seeing about a lot of those as well and your expectation like mine is that as some of the government assistance wanes 
uh, the need is just going to be even greater. Yeah, absolutely. So, and that's one of the biggest things is, you know, it's growing. Mm -hmm. And so, like, like I said, there's some people who, who continually come in for help, and then there's those that we're seeing that it's their first time. They almost feel a, a sense of, uh, I, I don't know the correct word, uh, but there's a humbleness to it. And uh, some people almost feel disgraced in trying, uh, I'm at the point where I need help, and that's where we can come alongside them and just say, mm -hmm. it's okay. You know, that's why we're here. We're here to help. Uh, in those respects as well. Okay, and and you're new in town, uh, so do you want to take just a little bit of time to tell us about who you are, where you came from? Uh, I, I think I'm trying to. Was it Rotary where you and your wife were present uh, yes. a week or so ago? Yeah. So tell yeah. us a little bit about coming to Traverse City. Yeah, we're we're brand new to the area. Um, so my wife and I just fin finished up the Salvation Army's equivalent of seminary school. Uh, in June. And so the, the way the Salvation Army works is about every four to five years, depending on the need of the church, but then also uh, the needs of the family as well, uh, there's, a, there's a shift. And so in that shift this year, there was positions left over for those coming out of seminary. Uh, and so that's where we, we got placed here. And so this is our first appointment. We both grew up in the Salvation Army. Um, Haley is a pastor's kid. And so uh, she's traveled around that way. I grew up growing to it as my church, and so I've always lived in, in that facet of the church side and, and helped with the social services side. So now we get to do uh, both full time, and I think that's the biggest blessing. And, and, so. and you're starting in Traverse City. Yeah, How on earth are you going to be able to leave in a few years? I mean, you're correct. starting at the the top the top <laughs> yeah no, that's how we feel is like okay you sent us to vacation that's great and uh, um, I mean the city is great the one thing we've noticed already being here um, one we're, we're very very busy but then two the community is so amazing we've mm -hmm. noticed uh, just uh, the outpouring of hearts the outpouring of funds the outpouring of there's just a, a, such a sense of community almost like the church of Acts I mean we're talking people are just reaching out oh, oh you need this here mm -hmm. it is. And so that's been yeah. amazing to see. I haven't seen that elsewhere. So, yeah, Traverse City is a good place, uh, good people, uh, and I think you'll enjoy your time here. Let me say, we haven't had a chance to really talk and get to know each other, but one of the things that we do at the church is we often uh, ref you know, have people referred to us uh, and partner with agencies like Father Fred and, and some of the other local agencies. So if you have people that need extra assistance, just give me a call. Um, and uh, we're glad to help out with rent, um, yeah. you know, car repairs, you know, all that kind of stuff, food. That's so, amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you. So thank you for being here, and thank you for the good work you're doing in our community. Thank you. Friends, we have three nights this year to try to accomplish what we accomplish in five nights every year. Normally, this sanctuary is filled with 174, 175, 200, 225 people on any given Wednesday night. We bring in $2,000 frequently on those nights. It's going to be a lot harder for us to reach those kind of numbers uh, this year. We don't have folks in the sanctuary. Uh, my poor wife is really the only audience member. Everybody else is here to work we just need your help because food rescue, street outreach, uh, Salvation Army, love thy neighbor, they have all had long-standing, very worthy ministries in our community, improving the quality of life for the people with whom they serve. And as you heard from Matthew, as I'm seeing in my own experience, things are only going to get worse. So we do need your assistance this year. We need everyone to step up and help us out. So we thank you for your support uh, in advance uh, and want you to know how much we appreciate it, uh, but also how much it is needed. Angela, take it away.
Angela, that was wonderful. I have to tell you, it's hard not to hear Andy Griffith singing that song. That's one of my Andy Griffith hymns. All right. A burglar broke into a home and was looking around. He heard a soft voice say, Jesus is watching you. Thinking it was just his imagination, he continued his search. Again, the voice said, Jesus is watching you. He turned his flashlight around and saw a parrot in a cage. He asked the parrot if he was the one talking, and the parrot said, yes, nothing like an honest parrot. He asked the parrot what his name was, and the parrot said, Moses. The burglar asked, what kind of people would name a parrot Moses? The parrot said, the same kind of people who would name their pit bull Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is watching you. All right. Uh, a circuit riding preacher trained his horse to go when he said, praise the Lord, and to stop when he said, amen. The preacher mounted the horse, said, praise the Lord, and went for a ride in the nearby mountains. When he wanted to stop for lunch by a mountain stream, he said, amen. After lunch, he took off again, saying, praise the Lord. The horse started heading toward the edge of a cliff on a narrow mountain trail. The preacher got excited and said, Whoa! Whoa! Then he remembered and said, Amen! And the horse stopped just short of the ledge. The preacher was so relieved that he looked up to heaven and said, Praise the Lord! <laughs> All right, one more, and, and this is one of my favorites. Satan appeared before a small town congregation. Everyone started screaming and running for the front church door, trampling each other in a frantic effort to get away. Soon everyone was gone except for an elderly gentleman who sat calmly. Satan walked up to him and said, Don't you know who I am? The man replied, Yep, sure do. Satan asked, aren't you going to run? Nope, sure ain't, said the man. Satan asked, why aren't you afraid of me? The man replied, been married to your sister for 48 years. All right, band, you're up. Oh, angel. 
Let's fly down, or we'll drive down to the... Well, that city sure is pretty, historic scene. Thank you, band. Listening to Bourbon Street Parade, I thought of a time years ago when I was down on Bourbon Street. We were in, actually, Biloxi, helping out with Katrina, uh, another church I served. And we went over to New Orleans for the, the day and found ourselves walking down Bourbon Street, not really knowing where we were, and started to see a change in the scenery. And there were guys out in front of bars uh, Huck String tried to get us into the door, and there were pictures on the sides of the ball, bar walls that uh, I can't really describe in church. Uh, they were X-rated, and I don't know how we ended up in that 
part of town, but we did, and there was one gentleman in particular really trying hard to get us into his establishment, and you know, I walked over and started talking to him, and you know, he's just laying it on thick, and we got to talk, and he asked me what I do. I said, well, I said, I'm a Presbyterian minister, and his whole affect changed the whole slick huckster bit out the door, and he was real, and we talked, and he asked me to pray with him, and I tell you, that was one of the most meaningful opportunities for ministry I've ever experienced, to stand on that corner, praying with that gentleman, just really touched my heart. Well, all of the agencies we're supporting this year are walking with people, are meeting people where it's real. People who are in need, people who need assistance, people who need to know that their lives have meaning and that there are folks in this community that love them and want to see them thrive. This is why we're here to support the work of these good agencies, Street Outreach, Food Rescue, Salvation Army, and Love Thy Neighbor, and help the folks in our community know that there are people who are willing to walk with them when things get real and assure them that they are loved. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your support. We very much appreciate your taking the time. If you want to forward the link to our YouTube page to your friends and family, they can watch and they can participate as well. Uh, we will be back next week, same bat time, same bat channel, same all of that uh, for our last um, doing good from a distance, and I hope you can join us. Uh, would you join me in prayer? Loving God, you not only welcome us into your life, but you open the eyes of our hearts that we may see this life more clearly. Give us courage to be so open to others, to let them become so dear to us that we might share not only your gospel, but our lives, that they too may have the eyes of their hearts opened and see the wonders of your love for them in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Angela, bring us home. <laughs>